Welcome to Life Affair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you very much for tuning into this week's episode. Now, this week's episode, I just got to share this. Actually, it's been an absolute game changer in the way that I have cut fringes. You've got to see it. You might already be doing it. If you are, high five because you're just already smashing it. But if you're not and you're struggling with these grown out, soft fringes and you're struggling to get movement and texture and stuff like that and thing without hours of point cutting and personalizing refining and messing around and trying to get it to sit right then boy have i got an episode for you today so this is all about cutting fringes so if you're a fringe expert you can feel free to skip this one and go and see one of the many other videos that i have created but today we're going to talk about those kind of long soft wolf cut chag type fringes but without all of that extra layering that goes into those shapes now obviously last year we had the butterfly cut which was kind of a fringe it was all about the fringe wasn't it? very heavy very fringy now that was a very difficult haircut to execute because of the way that the fringe was cut in didn't actually allow the fringe to move very well. So I've got a great technique that I'm absolutely loving. It has saved me masses of time. So let's get on with the technique. Probably all seen um, the kitty cut variation style haircut that is going around at the moment, uh, short or long. I did one a few weeks ago. It's very much this kind of shape. Now, one of the issues that I find um, with this is the fringe is very heavy. So without lots of point cutting, like I've done here, to loosen up the ends, um, it's very, very heavy. And it's very flat um, in its profile. So it can be very easy for the client to struggle to blow dry it into a decent shape. So I've showed you it like this in its worst case scenario, flat and just blow dried down, which let's be honest, a lot of the clients are gonna struggle to make these fringes work for themselves at home. So when I'm sectioning off a fringe to make sure that it fits to the client's head shape, okay, I always come down through the corner of the recession here, okay, and then I will repeat that process through to the side. So I'll come through to the center of the recession here, just like so. So from middle of the recession to the middle of the recession, I pick up the section and I'll make sure that it's even in terms of width and where it sits on the head. This is just a touch narrow. So I'll just take a little bit more hair from here, incorporate that over to that section, and that will be our section. Now that's quite a lot of fringe, but that's okay. Because what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna make this a lot lighter. You'll be able to see that this is all one length, pretty much coming through here. Okay, and we saw that it sat really flat. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is I wanna bring up the length to make sure that um, I'm happy with the overall length. Now this feels maybe like it's a touch too long um, for what I wanna achieve with this particular look. I'm going for that kind of swept out, you know, uh, butterfly fringe type effect, but going into much longer, much more one length hair. Okay, because some people want it but they don't want to have all the layers that go with these kind of shag, butterfly cut, kitty cut type of look. Take the hair and determine the length that's suitable. I want the shortest point to be kind of here on the nose. I'm going to, I love a twist cut. I love twist cutting. Okay, I just think it is the fastest way to create that arc that is so important in these particular looks. So if you've never done twist cutting before or you've never seen it, it's been around for a long time I certainly didn't invent it okay but you get your fringe section yeah what you want to do is you want to avoid pinching it together like that that I don't think works very well the reason being is that you get less over direction you can pinch it if you don't want too much of a curve but if you want a, a stronger curve come in with your fingers flat like that twist it pick it up with your other hand turn it round, and then come in behind the section and pull your fingers down to the desired length. Just my preferred way of doing it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take off some of this length, okay, so, and you can actually cut this in a slight V shape if you want it even higher in the middle. So we could do that today, just so you can see. We can come up, cut a little V out, and then work our way down to the opposite side, like so. You can see it's quite heavy, quite solid, and still quite flat. 
So let's pick that fringe area up once again. We're going to come behind the section. We're going to come behind the client. We're going to pick up the whole fringe in its entirety. And we're going to pull the hair back to the highest point on the head, just here, okay? So we're going to pull all the hair back, just like so, to the highest point. That's going to leave us with this high point. So a shorter point here and a shorter point there and a high point in the middle. And we're, provided we've pulled it all the way back to the highest point of the head, we're going to cut that off. Now this won't take any of the length away, but this will create a little bit of bounce and movement in that fringe. So effectively, we've layered the fringe with extreme over direction, and it makes such a big difference to how this fringe sits. So we can now see that the shortest point in this fringe is just above the eyebrows, but the longest point is here at the nose where we had it previously. So we've done nothing to the length. We can see automatically without doing anything, just literally cut it, we can see that this shape is now coming out and round. And that for me just helps these fringes immensely. What we do need to do now is just re-blow dry this a little bit because I just blasted it as flat as I could to make it look as bad as I could. But without doing anything, we've got some oomph in that fringe now. We've got some movement, we've got some texture, and it's gonna be so much easier for the client to blow dry in the specific shape that they want to create those sweepy, soft, beautiful fringes. Now, if you want to come back in and just quickly uh, point cut these edges just to create them even softer, then be my guest. But you don't have to spend ages and ages and ages point cutting the fringe to death like I've seen so many times and I've done myself so many times to try and get these fringes to sit well because of those layers where we over-directed, we used all that over-direction to cut those layers. So let's give this a little blow dry. So now with regards to the blow drying, we don't want loads of height out of this. We don't want it to stick out and curve right round. We just want to utilize those layers. So here we have the finished result and I'm sure you'll agree, it sits beautifully. And um, if I can just get this head off this stone. <laughs> It makes it lovely and light and it just flows into the hair so nicely because we've taken some of that weight off it. It means it can distribute into the hair much, much more easily. It's just that elevating the hair back and pulling it back to the highest point in the head that is the secret to this. So, so simple. I've layered fringes in many, many different ways, pulled them straight out, pulled them horizontal to the ground. I thought that was the answer but it's not until I actually pulled it all the way back to the highest point of the head here and cut it and took that triangular high point off that I found that the fringes just sit so much better in that way. You know, they've got a looseness to them that I can't replicate any other way with exception to a little bit of maybe razoring. You could do that with a razor. Um, if you'd like to see me razor cut a fringe, then let me know in the comment section. And I can talk to you about that because I've been razor cutting fringes for a little while now and I really like the results. I just don't think it works on everybody the same way that this does. Um, razoring, I think, is more for a specific hair type. But we can talk about that in a different video. If you enjoyed this, then thanks very much. Hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe for more videos and I'll see you in the next one.